Let's learn how to make a Discord bot using Java. In this video, I'll walk you through not only creating your bot inside of the Discord website, but also adding it to your server and creating a simple example application using Java. That example application will be a jumping off point for you to continue the bot development further. So let's get started. First thing that we need to do is we need to create an application on Discord's developer website. You can get there by going to discord.com forward slash developers. Now, of course, you'll have to have a Discord account in order to do anything. Thing. So you'll have to create an account or at least sign in to Discord on your browser. Once you sign in, you'll be met with this screen where you can create a new application by going to this button over here on the right and clicking on new application. Now we need to give our application a name as well as agree to the terms of service. The name can be anything, but it can't include the text Discord. And that's so that nobody gets confused that this application might actually be developed by Discord itself. So now I've given it a name. I'm going to click the checkbox to agree to the terms of service and then hit create. Next, I need to confirm that I'm I'm not human, I'll click the box. Now the first screen that you come to will be the general information screen. Now we don't need to really mess with anything inside of the application. The only thing that we do need to do is we need to get an API key for the bot that the application can use. So on the left hand sidebar, we'll click on bot. Here you can update all of the bot user information, anything that you want, you could add an icon, you could rename it if you wanted to. But what we really need is we need to reset this token. Notice that we don't have a token here. We need an API token so that our project can authenticate with Discord server, and then it knows that, hey, this bot is now online and can receive commands. So to get our API token, we just click on reset token, and then it wants you to know that you're resetting the token, which we don't even have one yet, so this is the only thing that we can do. And I'll say, yes, I'll do it. And then from here, I enter my password and hit submit. Now a new token was generated. If we scroll down, we can see the token that was created, and we can hit copy to copy it to our clipboard. Now while we're here, we need to update the privileges for our bot to be able to communicate with Discord servers and get information back that we need in order to service certain requests that users might make. To do that, we need to scroll down, go to Privileged Gateway Intents, and then I'm going to activate Presence Intents, Server Members Intent, and Message Content Intent. So I'll go over to the right and click on each one of these switches and then hit Save Changes. Next, we need to add the bot to our server. In order to do that, we need to go to the left-hand sidebar and click on Installation. On the installation screen, there will be a link down here that we need to visit. Now I realize you have the API key on your paste bin right now, and I don't want to get rid of that. So in order to get to this URL, I'm going to highlight it and then right click and then click on go to and then that URL. It should open up a new screen like this and you can see our tutorial bot here and then the icon that it would have. But what we want to do is we want to add it to a server. So we'll click on add to server. Now this appears to be what we want to do. However, one thing that it isn't doing is it's not adding the bot to our server. It's only adding the application. In order to add the bot to our server, we need to go up to the URL and then at the end of the URL, add an ampersand sign and the word scope equals bot. Then hit enter and we'll be met with the same screen except now we have add a bot to a server. Now when we scroll down we have to select the server that we want to add it to. This will be servers that you have admin privileges for that you can actually add users to. I have this tutorials one. I'm going to select it and then scroll all the way down and click on authorize. Next we have to verify that we're not human. I mean that we are human. I'm sorry. I guess that's something a robot would say. Oops. Now we've successfully added the bot to our server. If you go to the server on your Discord application, you might get a welcome message for the user. And if we look at the users list, we can now see that our tutorial bot is offline. And that's exactly what we would expect because we're not running the application and connecting it with our program. Now we've added the bot to our server, we can start creating the Java project. Next, you'll want to move into the editor of your choice. I'm going to use VS Code for the rest of this tutorial, but you can use whatever editor you'd like. I'll also be going through the whole setup process to set up the project as well as all of the configurations and everything else. There are two prerequisites for this. One, that you have a suitable version of Java that you want to use. I suggest using Java 17 or later. I'm personally going to use Java 21 for this tutorial. And two, you'll need to have a package manager installed, either Maven or Gradle. I'm going to be using Maven for this tutorial. So if you want to follow along exactly, you can also use Maven. So let's create our project. I'm going to hit Control Shift P on the keyboard to open up the command palette. And then I'll type in Maven. And from here, I'll click on new project. Now it's asking me for the archetype and I'm going to select the Maven archetype quick start. Then it selects a version. I'm going to do 1.4. Now we have to put in our group ID, which is basically our package base. I'll do 
com.hundefined. Next, we have to make our artifact ID, which is basically just the name of our project, and I'll name it discord bot. Next, we select the destination folder, which is the parent directory where your new folder will exist. So I'm just choosing this tutorials folder. Now it's taking me through the quick start archetype from Maven, and it's selecting a version, and the version is 1.0 snapshot. I'll accept that and then everything looks good here and I'll hit enter to confirm. So now that it's created, it's asking me to open up the folder and I'll open it up. Okay, now we can get going with our project. The first thing I'll do is I'll edit some configuration. So here I'll go to the pom.xml and then I'm gonna change a few things. First thing is that I'm gonna delete this URL because we don't need it. The next thing I'm gonna change this compiler source and compiler target. I told you at the beginning that I'm going to use JDK 21. So I'm gonna change this to 21. Once you change those, there are a few new properties that I also want to add. These will be for the dependencies that we're gonna add for this project. The first dependency is the Java Discord API. This is what we're going to use for the whole project. It's basically a wrapper wrapping all of the rest requests for the Discord API. It takes out all of the complexities of us having to create our own wrapper and instead just puts it into this one dependency. We'll be using this a lot in our application. The next dependency is SLF4j, and this is for logging, and so is the logback, which is a specific implementation of the SLF4j interface. The next section are our dependencies, and this is where we're going to add all of the dependencies that we just added version numbers for up in the properties section. So the first dependency we want to add is the Java Discord API, and then we want to add the other two logging dependencies. And also, I'm using the latest version for all of these. Now, if we scroll down, we want to to make a build plugin section that we can add a singular plugin that we will use to create an Uber jar. That plugin is the Maven assembly plugin with the configuration to jar with dependencies. This is so that we can create an Uber jar containing all of the dependencies. And this is so we can run that singular jar anywhere that we want. Inside of this configuration, we also need to specify our main class. And this will be the class that we use to start our application. And lastly, we need to set the execution phase and we're setting it to package while also having a goal and calling it single. So that'll be it for our palm. We can save it and close it. Now by default, an app.java was created and we don't need it. So I'm just going to delete it. And in its place, I'm going to create a new class and I'm calling it the same thing that I put inside of the Maven assembly plugin so that they can match. I called it discord bot. I'll use that and hit enter. Now that we have our main class, we should always include our logger. Since we're using logback, I'm going to use a log factory to get the logger. If you are in VS Code like me and you get a red squiggly under logger because it can't not be resolved to a type, you can just optimize the import statements by holding alt, hitting shift, and then clicking on O on your keyboard. Then we just select what logger we're meaning to import and I'm meaning to import the SLF4j logger. Next, since this is our main application, I'm going to also import the JDA. And now that we have our class variables, we can create the main function. Now, in order to initialize JDA, we need to get our bot token. And if you're like me and you've already overwritten your paste bin, well, you can just go through the same process to grab the API token again. I'll go back to the bot section in the developer website and then click on reset token. Once I reset my token, I click on copy. Now that it's in my clipboard, I could paste it directly into this Discord bot class, but I don't really want to do that because I actually want this to be hidden in case somebody were to be looking at my application and can see all of the code. I want a certain file to be read in and then pull that API token from it. So we need to create a resources folder under main. So I'll create this resources folder and underneath this folder, I'm going to create a new file and call it config.properties. Now this is where I create a new property called bot token and I'll set it equal to what's in my paste bin and then I'll hit save. Now we can go back to discord bot. Now I kind of want to be organized here. So I'm going to create a class on its own to read in that config.properties file and then pull out the token itself. So I created a new folder called config and then I put a bot config.java file inside of it. Now again, I want a logger. I want the config file that I'm gonna read in and I want a properties variable that I can load the bot token into and then pull from. Now, since I don't want to have multiple bot config objects, I'm creating a static block and then putting all the code in there. So first I wanna read in the class file as an input stream. So I'm using this try catch block in order to do that. I'm also adding the catch portion to this try catch block, just catching the IO exception and then logging that. And now we should have a null check on input. And if it is null, we need to log that error as well. And if it isn't null, we'll load the input into our system properties. Lastly, since properties is private, we need a way to access the properties. And we do that by creating this function to get the bot token. Okay, now that we're done with bot config, we can save it and then use it inside of discord bot. So now inside discord bot, I'm using bot config to get the bot token. Next, I'm adding a sanity check just to make sure that the bot token does exist. Otherwise, I'll log the error and exit the application. So now 
now we need to initialize JDA. And we're going to do that all inside of a try catch block so that we can catch any errors that we might get. So here I'm adding the try catch along with a log statement. Now here's where we start building our JDA instance. So we use JDA builder to either create a default, create or create a light version of the Discord bot. Each creation function has different uses, but I'm just going to use create default because it is the easiest. Along with create default is only one parameter and that's the bot token. Next, we enable our intents and this will be what we are allowed to do as a bot. And lastly, we'll be adding an event listener so we can listen to any commands that are coming in from the server. Don't worry, we'll be creating the command listener later. Now we need to call jda.await ready in order to wait for this object to be fully initialized. It's spawning new threads and this just allows it to wait in the main thread that we started the application on. Now that we've initialized JDA, we can register our slash commands. The way this bot is going to work is that you'll have a forward slash and then you'll have an autocomplete for a command that Discord knows about and then you can send that in at which time the command listener will pick up the event and then do whatever command that you requested it to do. So just to keep our code clean, I'm going to create a new function to register all of the Slash commands. Now I'll need to reference JDA, so this is just another sanity check. Next, it's always good to have verbose logging, so I'm adding another log statement here. Now what we're doing here is we need to update commands with the new slash commands that we want Discord to know about. If we check out Discord and then we hit a forward slash on our keyboard, we're met with this menu that gives us options that we can select. When we select an option, sometimes it has a secondary parameter where we can add more information. And then when we send that message out, it then sends it to our bot and replies back. So the first First thing that we do is we update commands and then we need to add all the commands that we want. For this simple application, I'm gonna add a ping command to check the latency of the bot. I'll add an info command to get info about the bot and I'll add an echo command to respond back with the same message that you send in. With this echo command, we need to add an option to add text to the parameters of the command. The last thing that we need to do for this is to add it to a queue in order for JDA to send off the request and get a response back from Discord. Now with the function finished, we just add it after the JDA initialization. Okay, so now that we're we're finished with the main function, we can create our command listener. So I've created a new folder for listeners and I've added the command listener.java class. Since we're registering this as an event listener, we need to extend the listener adapter class. Inside of here, we always have our logger and we wanna keep track of all of our commands. So we're creating a map with a string key and a command value in order to store our commands. Now I've created this commands folder and inside of it, I created a new interface called command.java. Any implementation of this interface will need to be able to get its name, get its description and be able to execute the slash command. So I've created this execute slash with the slash command interaction event from JDA as a parameter. Now we can go back to command listener and import that interface. Next we have the no argument constructor and this is where we start registering our commands. The first one being the ping command, then the info command, and lastly the echo command. We also should log that we've registered these commands inside of that map. Now don't worry, once we're finished with this class, we'll go through each one of these commands and create the classes for them. Next we need to override our first function from the listener adapter, the on ready event. Now we don't really have anything going on on the on ready event, so I'm just logging the bot user. The next function that we need to override is the on slash command interaction. And this will be the event anytime a slash command is entered into the server. Now we can grab the command name from the event and then pull it from our command map. Then we need to have a sanity check to make sure that the command exists. Then we'll log the command and then execute slash on that command. Otherwise, if the command doesn't exist for some odd reason, we we just reply with an unknown command as well as log it. So that's it for our command listener. Next, let's create the commands. The first command is the ping command and I added the class to my commands folder. And inside of this, we need to implement the command interface. So we add each one of the functions in the command interface, which is git name, git description and execute slash. So for git name, we just return ping. For git description, we return checks the bot's latency to Discord's gateway. And inside execute slash, this is where we actually do the meat of our command. So here we're grabbing the ping from JDA and then we're using event.reply format, which will reply directly to the user that submitted the command. Inside of this is a formatted string. And in that string, we use that ping as an integer that gets put as a decimal inside of this string. Then like always, we would queue this response so that JDA can send it off to Discord. Next, let's create the info command in a similar way. The name is info and the description is displays information about the bot. Now for execute slash, we're gonna use the embed builder so that we can create some custom response. So we first instantiate an embed builder and now we can create an embed response with a title, a description, a custom color, and then we can add multiple fields underneath it. So I'm adding an author field, a language field, 
field and a library field. Lastly, I want to add a footer with some custom text. Now, in order to send this embed, we need to create a message embed. Now that we've built it with this embed builder, we can then send it off as a reply and of course, queue it. Now we can work on the last command, the echo command. So this one starts off just like the others with the name being echo and the description echoes back the text you provide. So in the execute slash function, we need to grab the optional text that comes with that command. We do that by calling event.get option. And then the parameter is the name of the option, which in this case is text. Next, we want to build the string that we're going to echo back with. We want another sanity check just to make sure that text option does exist. And then inside of here, we'll set the text to echo to the text option as a string. Otherwise, if it doesn't exist, that means they didn't provide any text. And we just say you didn't provide any text to the echo. And as always, we reply back with the text, but we're also setting it as ephemeral, which means only the user that sent it will be able to see the response. And of course we queue it. So now that we finished the echo command, we need to make sure that we have the imports all set up and we're done with our application. We can start to run it. So there are a couple of ways you can run it. You can either build it with Maven and then get the jar file and run that, or you can just run it from your IDE. If you're using Visual Studio Code, you can just hit the play button if you have the Discord bot main class selected. Now it'll automatically start up if your API key is correct. And we can see that we get this login successful. And then if we scroll down, we can see that it finished loading and now our bot is online and ready. So if we go back to Discord, we can see the users and I have this tutorial bot and it is now online. So we should be able to use the forward slash commands and start to send commands to our bot. So if I hit forward slash, well, hey, wait a minute. You'll notice that it doesn't have anything in here. We can't see the forward slash commands for this bot. Now, why is that? Well, if I go over here and right click on the bot and then I go to apps and then I click on manage server integration, inside of here, you'll see these registered commands, which means they should be available in all channels. But for some reason, it doesn't automatically update it. I, I'm not really sure why. But to remedy that, if you click on add channels and then select the A channel, it doesn't matter which one, and then click add, then save the changes, and then leave this menu, you can now hit forward slash and you'll be able to see the commands of the bot. So if I go to the bot commands text channel and then hit forward slash, I'll also still get the commands of the bot. So let's start with the ping command. And I hit enter, it responds back with pong and then the gateway ping is 58 milliseconds. What about the info command? Oh, it responds back with this nice little panel and it's got this color on the left. And then it says, this is a simple discord bot created for teaching purposes using Java and JDA. So that's neat. What about the echo command? Now you'll see that there's a little black part and it says text. And if I click it, now I have text that I can enter. So I'll enter echo back and then I'll hit enter and it responds back with echo back. So we just went through all of setting up a bot on discord as well as adding it to our server and then created an application that then interfaces with the bot and allows us to talk to it, use commands, do whatever we want. Now you can expand this further by creating more commands and do pretty much whatever you want. Also, all of the code and the links that were used in the video are in the description. So if you wanted to just clone the repository, you could just do that and then build off of it. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did like it, go ahead and leave a like for me and also subscribe if you really wanna see more of this. And that is how you create a Discord bot using Java.